What's up, Design YouTube? My name is John, aka The Design Guy, and I'm back reviewing another one of your portfolio websites. This portfolio website is from a designer named Brent, based out of Texas. Brent signed up for a solo portfolio review, wanting to know how he can improve the overall aesthetic of his website, the quality of his design projects, and the story and the information he's providing around his design projects. If you have a portfolio website that you're looking to improve, whether it be for job hunting or to just improve your overall design skills, feel free to sign up at the link in my bio. And with that said, let's get into the review. So you are using Adobe Portfolio. Great choice. It's totally fine. It makes it really easy to pop up a portfolio website. I'm currently in a part of the world where the Wi-Fi is not the strongest. And I noticed that when I went to go reload some of these images, the image quality, while it's really great, the file size is really big. And so a couple of things. Some of your images are above one megabyte. And so... The quality is really sharp. It's great. But if you're in a situation, you're in a part of the world or a shop or a cafe or an office where the Wi-Fi is not the strongest, it's going to take a little bit longer to load these images. So I would make sure to, to just keep that in mind. A couple of things you can do is try to keep your images under one meg. You can still use a pretty large image dimension or aspect ratio. But once you save it out from Photoshop or Figma or wherever you're using to export the images, if you export it as a JPEG or a PNG, I would then go ahead and use Image Converter that will convert it to a WebP format, which is just a little bit more optimized for use in the web. The thumbnails that you have for the images look really good. Let's click into this first one, Grand Oaks Barbecue. Grand Oaks is focused on providing high quality barbecue seasoning to the local community. The seasoning is competition quality, but created for the weekend warrior. And that is exactly what I wanted to do for Toby, support him and provide the best product design for his seasoning. Okay, so for this description, you mentioned that Toby prides himself on quality and community, and then that you wanted to do this for Toby. So rather than just uh, saying that you wanted to create something good, what was the problem here? did the seasoning lack visual uniqueness or a brand or an identity before you decided to pick this project up? Um, when we connected, okay, here we go. Wanting to have community, the community feel, the name Grand Oaks was decided as it represents the area we live in. Being in Southeast Texas, the oak tree is native and a strong symbol throughout the area. Da, 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 da. Okay, so if you can tell, <laughs> I read that first paragraph and then I was wanting more because this image below it pushes down that next bit of information that I'm looking for. And then you kind of go into the logo breakdown. So this is kind of like a the beginning of a visual identity for this seasoning. Okay. So there's a lot of cool meaning in this. First thing I would do is move up the second paragraph to the top. If you're going to introduce the seasoning and then you kind of you do want to introduce the seasoning and then get into the problem that needs to be the information that you like sets the tone for this project and for this like quote unquote case study hey if you're still watching this video and you feel like you already learned something that you can apply to your portfolio website go ahead and leave in the comments portfolio upgrade i'd really appreciate it thank you the next thing I would do is because you then go into this third paragraph is like the breakdown of a logo. And so what you can do, break down the elements of this logo, right? Um, I think your hierarchy for this copy is just a little small. It's really like if I, if you didn't separate this in a way, or, you know, I would think like you'd want to bring that second paragraph up. You might want to move this image down and then have another heading here that says like, logo concept or logo breakdown, something along those lines. I don't know. And then go into the detail about the symbolism of the oak tree, the symbolism of the 28 stars representing that Texas was the 28th state. Like this pattern is lovely. I like that a lot. This pattern makes sense to be a full bleed image. This die line doesn't necessarily because I think like you have the actual images here of like the product in real life, which I think is great. If I had to format this project, I would do logo breakdown. So all of the elements and how you came up with them, then how does that look combined with the word mark with barbecue 2024? I would then go into applications of that logo. So this barbecue, this pattern, this label, and then more of the technical design of like this die line, you know, just kind of ordering that in a way that makes a little bit more sense or kind of bring guides me along the story of like how you solve the problem. I would also, since I know, like since from these images, this, this is now 
in the world. Like this product is out. It's got your branding on it, your design on it. You could probably include a paragraph at the end here of like a takeaway or like kind of a summary of, you know, after uh, working with Toby and redesigning the labels and getting some of the materials out. Could you tie something in about sales or could you tie some information in about how the launch went or how he found getting into stores easier, something along those lines, you know, and that's going to take a discussion with Toby. And I think that would be really helpful to kind of just like really accentuate the value of your design work here. Hey, if you're finding this video helpful, don't just stare. Subscribe. Please. The only image in this project that feels lost is this one. It's kind of like you're trying to make an ad. I don't like the formatting of it. It just sort of sticks out, right? Like this, all of the other images feel a little bit more of like, hey, I was working on the visual identity for this company to help them get into retail stores, to help them grow and build a community. And this is the work that I did. I don't see where this image necessarily falls in to some of the other materials. And with that said, I'd also think, consider about like, you know, whether he asked you to make all of these or not, and these are just some of the ones that you use to sell the idea, consider making a couple more images to build this out a little bit more. You know, what else can that, can the logo be applied to, you know, if they ever decide to go to a barbecue festival or some kind of cookout or something like that, right? What else can you build this world, this atmosphere around this uh, product and this brand? Let's go back to another SciTech is the Crisis Intervention Team Association of Colorado, an organization that specializes in providing law. Cool. Love that. Getting there with like how we're incorporating different elements of the logo right? or how we're telling that story, really. Um, I love the symbolism of like the chevrons represent the upper momentum, the mountains of Colorado feels very at home. Great. I think you could do a little bit better of a job visualizing that, presenting that, right? You could do a little bit more of a breakdown. Be careful with burning type into the image. For example, if I scale down, you will see that that stuff can get smaller. If I scale down even smaller, yeah. So just be careful with that. So let's just go to work. You're seeing some of the images might be a little large. Just keep that in mind. RJR, roofing and home repairs, a small business running by. I like your work. And I think some of these projects are just missing a little bit more of building that sense of an atmosphere or yeah, around the brand, around the service, around the business. Someone to really, I think that you would really align with that I think does great work and is, you know, you're kind of on the same path is Alan Peters. He does really great logos, uh, logo designs, and he does a great job of building the uh, the story behind them. He builds the environment and he just shows his process in a really great way. And I'll send you his work. I'll send you his Instagram. You should definitely take a look. Let's talk about the overall aesthetic of the pro uh, of your website. Now, I know this is Adobe Portfolio. I think we need to just do a little bit technical, a couple of technical tweaks in terms of like image size, file size, stuff like that. I think we can have a little bit more hierarchy, a little bit more visual uniqueness when it comes to the typography on the site as i mentioned like some of your copy for when you are describing your thought and your process is a little small for me it's all in like helvetica or Arial, whatever is there something that maybe aligns more to your personality i really like your logo and the helvetica and Arial just seem kind of flat it just seems very default and not in a good way so something you can think about there and let's go over to your info page really quickly Life has taken me on a journey, different professions to reach this point, but Air Force, congratulations, and thank you for your service. Awesome. Okay, something to think about. Um, in terms of design, the line length of this page is really long, but as a designer and, and as a creative, right, like being able to write is amazing, and I think you've done a great job here, and I love that you are able to write some of this stuff out. Now let's use that design and creative size how, side. How can we visualize this in a more interesting way, right? So it's not just a bunch of text. Something I did when I was younger on my portfolio to kind of communicate a sense of personality, a sense of humor was I added two columns on my portfolio website. One was likes and one was dislikes. And I had a bunch of things under the likes column, like hot dogs, you know, design, typography, like a bunch of stuff that wasn't related to design. I can't remember off the top of my head. In the dislikes column, I had just a few things, olives, taxes, bees or bee stings and sharks. And that was just to kind of 
add a sense of humor to my portfolio. I look at your info page and I think like, cool, like you love NES and skateboarding graffiti. Like, um, could you get some like 3D symbols in here? Could you design some icons that represent that just to kind of align more to this idea of a designer and that you're able to work with information and present that in a way that's visually interesting. I think the quality of the work is really good. I think you, you know, you might be able to kind of come back to some of these projects and just add a few more pieces that really build that story. But overall, I love your, your direction. I love your, your thought process. And I think you can feel really good and about your portfolio in its current state and also have opportunity to tweak it just a little bit to even elevate it just that little bit more. So that's it for this portfolio review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments or you can DM me on Instagram, TikTok, whatever your platform of choice is. If you have a portfolio website that you're looking to upgrade, you're not feeling super confident about it and you want to start looking for new job opportunities or just to learn how to improve your design skills, then go ahead and sign up at the link in my description. And with that said, have a great day and see you in the next video.